Welcome to Colorado Worship Online for October 31st, 2021. While some people call today Halloween, in the Lutheran Church, we refer the, to this as Reformation Sunday. It is the day, traditionally, in which we remember that Martin Luther nailed his 95 theses, or items for discussion, on the door of the Wittenberg uh, Church. And you can see a picture of that uh, representation behind me. And like in Luther's time, there were plagues going around. And we have uh, the coronavirus hitting us all across the world. And because of that, we're continuing with online worship. So like the times of Martin Luther, we're here being with you virtually. Not sure what kind of computer or internet they had back then, however. Let us come to a place of worship. By the way, my name is Edward Mooney. I'm the pastor at First Lutheran Church in Gypsum. With me today is uh, Caroline Mooney, who will be doing a number of our readings. And now, let's prepare for worship. Let us pray. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. God, our comforter, like lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. our time for children of all ages really but uh, I'm mostly thinking of some of the children in our congregation such as Brody and Leo and Omi and Anya every week I think of you guys so remember me too now today is Reformation Sunday and in the history of our church Christianity it was a very scary time kind of like what we're feeling right now with the coronavirus. What's going to happen? What's going to become of this? And I was trying to think of something to relate it to you, those of you who are in school. And I thought of something from my long ago past. As you can see from the picture behind me, um, I used to be a high school teacher. So I used to have a class. And every year at the beginning of school, I was very nervous about what would my students be like? I know some of them, but not very many of them at all. And how would I get along with them? And would this new class be easy to work with or hard to work with? Would there be kids who are difficult, 
would there be kids who are really nice? And it was really, really scary at the beginning of the year. Kind of like what you went through maybe a month or so ago when you started school. Maybe it was a little scary to go into a new classroom with a new teacher and not sure what was that teacher like? Is she going to be nice or is she going to be mean? Or, you know, you were scared, probably like I was when I was in school too. But that's the one thing I've come to realize when I was a teacher is after a little while, I got to know the students and I got to care about them. And I got to, um, you know, find that they're good and things settled down. And what I learned from this, I'm hoping we can all glean, is that after a while, what we're scared of kind of fades and we can get along and move forward. And we're going to do that with this coronavirus thing too. I mean, now kids are able to get uh, vaccinations and it's up to you and your parents to decide on that, but I'm not sure you have much to be afraid of there either. I think we're gonna get through this. Just like my first weeks of every school year when I had new students and just like the first weeks of every school year when you had a new teacher, we're gonna get through this and things will become normal. And uh, I just wanted to say I care about you guys and I'm looking forward to the day that we can get back together again. Take care now. Bye-bye. The prayer of the day. Almighty God, gracious Lord, we thank you that your Holy Spirit renews the church in every age. Pour out your Holy Spirit on your faithful people. Keep them steadfast in your word. Protect and comfort them in times of trial. Defend them against all enemies of the gospel and bestow on the church your saving grace through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to John 8, 31 through 36. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, if you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. They answered him, we are descendants of Abraham and have never been slaves to anyone. What do you mean by saying you will be made free? Jesus answered them, very truly, I tell you, everyone who commits a sin is a slave to sin. The slave does not have a permanent place in the household. The son has a place there forever. So if the son makes you free, you will be free indeed. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Thank you for reading this week's gospel for us, Caroline. And I had some thoughts about uh, the gospel and Reformation Sunday. As you can see in the photo behind me, there's a depiction of Martin Luther and his friends hanging up his 95 theses on the church door. Strangely enough, um, there are a lot of people that debate whether or not this actually happened. Now we do know that Martin Luther wrote 95 theses and he distributed them throughout the church, whether it was on the door or not. I would suggest it was probably true that he put something on the door, not that that really matters all that much. Now the word thesis or theses is plural means idea or model or theory or something you want to discuss. Uh, and these 95 ideas were things that he felt the church at that time needed to address. This was a practice back then to sort of post an issue on a bulletin board to bring it up at a meeting, uh, something you believe that's being ignored or pushed aside, but something you felt very strongly that the church needed to really sit down and hash out. By the way, the Reformation didn't happen the way he wanted it to. He really wanted people to come together in prayer and love and work their way through it. He didn't really want a division. In fact, I look back and I'm not sure either side really wanted a division, and it's very sad. And Martin Luther wanted to start a dialogue about our system of beliefs with the church leaders. Sadly, his 95 theses created division, separation, and anger. This may sound radical, 
but I'm convinced that people back then would rather dig in their heels than to sit down and listen to another and understand one another and accept one another. This digging in of heels back in the 16th century led to great division. Within this setting at the same time, there was a plague of disease affecting people. The disease back then was called the black or bubonic plague. It was a terrible disease and death was widespread across Europe. There were many uh, waves of the plague throughout Europe back then. I'm wondering if we're in a similar place right now. A plague has infected our people. We call it the coronavirus. And there is conflict over how to deal with it and what our religious response should be to this plague. Some are using this as a way to call for division and separation, not as an opportunity to reach out and listen to different views. I wonder if this division, this separation, is a form of sin, but not in the way we're used to defining sin. Let me explain. We often see a sin as an act, like when someone steals someone else's money. But there is a definition, definition of sin that can change our view of what sin is. According to Strong's Concord Concordance, by the way, that's a book that is just thick and has, it talks about every single word in the Bible. It's actually quite fascinating. In the original Greek, the word for sin is hemartin. One definition of this word, hemartin, is, get this, to fail one's purpose. I believe that one purpose of those of us who follow Jesus can be found in Matthew chapter 5, the ninth verse. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Like in the 1500s, we have a choice. We have a plague and people pointing out differences in so many things, politics, church activities, social gatherings, and masks, for example. Our choice is very simple and clear, I believe. We can choose to stay in relationship, to stay in discussion, to stay caring about one another, or we can choose to divide and leave one another. Unfortunately, because of the years I've worked with the church, I've come to know quite a number of pastors. And I'm going to be very straight with people. Many pastors are weary, not of what you think, but of this conflict, this infighting, this division, them and us. I'm calling for us to be peacemakers. Whenever I think someone is totally wrong, I look to a reading in today's uh, Bible readings. Romans 3, 22 to 23. Paul tells us that there is no distinction since all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. I too have fallen short, so I'm in no position to judge anyone else. There are times I feel I want to, but I really push this verse into the forefront of my mind. I too have fallen and I need to show compassion. I believe in my heart, God is calling us to stay together because of love for one another, because we care for one another. I've gotten to know many families, many couples, many children in our church. I care about them. If they have different views on how to worship or how we should deal with the COVID issue or whether we should wear masks or not, I hope we could still reach down deep inside and see that we still love one another. The truth, as Jesus tells us in John 8.32, shall set us free. If we cannot see that we're all flawed and reaching for understanding, we remain in bondage to what that which fails our purpose. Today, let us start the week by acknowledging that we have all fallen short by embracing the idea that we wish to be peacemakers, which means children of God. Please pray with me. Father, thank you for loving me in spite of my weakness. Thank you for loving all of us, the entire church, and in fact, all of creation, in spite of our weakness. Father, 
please keep it in our hearts that love is what endures, not faith or hope, but forever it is love because God is love. Father, give us the spirit of love to deal with our conflicts, our chafing, our misunderstandings. And Father, make this not a great division, but use this as an opportunity for all of us to come together. I ask in the name of Jesus, the Prince of Peace. Amen. Prayers of intercession. Set free from sin and death and nourished by the word, word of truth, we join you in prayer for all of God's creation. When I say, hear us, O God, your response is, your mercy is great. We pray for all those who long for a word of truth and for the radical grace that flows from the cross. Inspire congregations to freely and boldly proclaim, proclaim your love for all people with persistence and hope. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for your creation, for mountains, rivers, streams, cities, homesteads, and neighborhoods. Write in our hearts a new love and care for creation. Give us the will to curb wasteful habits and to hold accountable those who ne neglect the vulnerable. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for all who aspire to public office, and for all who will vote on Tuesday at local polling places. Pour wisdom and understanding upon all who govern so that communities of justice and peace may thrive. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all who long for healing in mind and body and spirit. Strengthen hospitals, clinics, counseling centers, nursing homes and recovering centers to be holy spaces of renewal that all might live the abundant life you intend. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all who seek to grow in faith and love of you. Guide teaching and learning and confirmation, small groups, Sunday school, youth groups, schools, seminaries, and universities. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We give thanks for all the saints and reformers who have gone before us who dwell in your holy habitation. Give us courage through their example to challenge unjust systems and work toward life-giving reformation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Confident that you hear us, O oh God, we boldly place our prayers into your hands through Jesus Christ, our truth and life. Amen. Amen. Thank you for those prayers. And now, may the peace of Christ be with you always and also with you. Now let us share socially distanced peace with one another. And I, as I do every week, I urge you to reach out and call someone in our church or in your community. Wish them peace. Tell them you're thinking of them. 
let's not be alone through this. And finally, uh, like uh, the church is still uh, getting by, but uh, we need funds to continue to operate. And since we can't pass the basket around virtually, we ask people to send uh, their offerings to First Lutheran Church, PO Box 391, Gypsum, Colorado, 81637. And now let us pray as our Lord has taught us. Now for some announcements. We don't have many, but your church council is meeting about every two weeks now discussing when we can go back to worship in person. I do know that the council is concerned about one thing. Hospitalization rates in Colorado have skyrocketed to almost record levels, and the governor is concerned and may put in rationing with hospitals, and that means it might be difficult to get medical services. So at this time, um, the council will be discussing this, but our first concern is for your health and well-being. I know this is difficult because there are some people saying we should have more faith. Well, there's one thing I think we should have is we all know uh, faith, hope, and love. Love is the greatest. Love is the one that lasts. I urge us towards more love for one another, concern for one another. And that's where I put my faith, is in that love. So that's the only real announcement we have right now. But you will be getting messages uh, very soon about what the church is deciding. As I said, the council meets now almost every other week to discuss this, because we're keeping you in mind first. And now please receive, receive the blessing. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be upon you now and forever in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now for our sending him.
to the, the end of another uh, worship session for Colorado Worship Online for Reformation Sunday. And I, one thing I urge you to do is go online and look up Martin Luther's 95 Theses. See what he wrote about. Um, I'm, I got a feeling that not many people are well aware of them. And maybe this would be a good time to do so. So until next week, go in peace, serve the Lord. And the congregation responds with, thanks be to God. We'll see you next week. God bless you. Bye-bye. Church is one found